Hey guys, welcome to the next video on share confirmations. In the pat in the uh, last video, we went over how to, um, with what share confirmations are and how to draw an example in share confirmation. This video is going to be talking about how certain groups prefer to be equatorial over others. Okay, and so what groups prefer to be over uh, to be equatorial or axial? Well, for one thing, bulkier groups. Uh, tend to be more equatorial. Why is that? Well, the reasoning for why they want to be on the equatorial over axial side is because it can reduce something called a 1, 3, diaxial interaction. All right, so what is that? We draw a chair here. So we have this. That was so bad. Okay. All right, that's not as horrible, but still pretty horrible. And so we have this chair. Now I'm going to draw this X. X is any atom. Doesn't matter what it is. We have an H. An H that I'm just putting out over there. And now I'm going to number these carbons. One, two, three, two, three. Okay, and so what these 1-3 diaxial interactions are, are the interactions between the groups on that carbon I labeled as, the atom I labeled on carbon 1, and between carbon 3, 1 and 3. Okay, so when we have groups that are axial like that, it'll have more 1-3 diaxial interactions. When they're equatorial, that effect, uh, well, we, don't, we won't have those interactions, which can help make the chair more stable, all right? Now, like I said before, certain groups like to be more uh, equatorial, okay? So what I want you guys to do is look at this chart over here. This is given on a, this has been given on past tests before. I'm not sure. You might have seen this in workshop at one point or another. Um, maybe you haven't, but it's definitely a really good chart for you guys to understand. Uh, so K, equilibrium constant. You guys saw that in Gen Chem, but all it means is the larger your equilibrium constant, the more you will be to the right. So the more there will be of this than this. All right. And also it says here percentage with R as equatorial. So that can help you if you're not, if you're shaky on the K. And so it lists a bunch of, bunch of substituents. And it tells you the favorability of that, sub, uh, that substituent to being equatorial versus axial. So if we look at hydrogen, the percentage with that hydrogen as equatorial is 50%. So it doesn't really care whether it's axial or whether it's equatorial, right? Whereas the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, you can see that uh, in iodine, you can see that they're about around 60 to 70%. Uh, fluorine is a little bit less. Fluorine is around 60%. Chlorine, bromine, iodine are about 70%. Whereas groups like methyls, ethyls, isopropyls, terbutyls, they are heavily favoring to being equatorial, okay? Because they're bulkier in general. So before I go on, let's just talk about why halogens wouldn't want to be, uh, don't have such high favorability towards the equatorial compared to those carbon chains, okay? So the thing about halogens are they form longer bonds, all right? So... If we were to draw a chair, now I'm going to draw a different looking chair because you guys should get used to the fact that chairs can look the opposite way as well. Let's draw hydrogens here, hydrogen there, and a methyl. And here's our 1 3 diaxial interactions. So that's what happens with the methyl. What about with the halogen? That's bad. Draw that again. So we have our hydrogen, hydrogen, halogen. So like I said, they form longer bonds. And so let's draw our interactions. They're not, uh, they're not as strong. They're much weaker. Okay. So there's much less 1-3 diaxial interactions there, so it's actually more stable than something like a methyl, okay? And so just 
uh, be aware of that idea that halogens may not always favor the equatorial position. Whereas you can see methyls, isopropyls, terbutyls, they really heavily for, uh, favor equatorial. And why is that? Well, I drew the methyl as CH3, but methyl, remember, really kind of looks like this. Right? We have these massive groups hanging all around our chair, and so they're pretty bulky. Right? So that's a methyl. Now, imagine a terbutyl. Right? You're going to have this. Now you have this massive group that has three methyls on it. That's extremely bulky. Now here's your hydrogens here for the 1,3 diaxial interaction. Look at that. They're surrounded by these massive bulky groups. They're going to be extremely hindered. I mean, there's just going to be a lot of space taken up by these uh, terbutyl groups when they're axial. And so there's going to be a lot of 1,3 diaxial interactions. All right. Now also think about it. There's single bonds rotate, so imagine if this bond is rotating. Now you have a spinning helicopter of methyls. All right, so you're going to get CH3s all over the place. So instead of keeping it axial, what really happens is the ring is going to go actually like this. Terbutyl is never, you can see, greater than 99.9% .9 of the time, it will be equatorial. All right, so it's safe to say that it's really never axial. So what it will really just look like is like this so it'll be equatorial rather than axial and here's our just a hydrogen over there in case you're wondering how the axial looks like right and so that's our carbon number one so if you want to draw our, oh, um, hydrogens all right, you'll have one right there, one right there, and you can see that the one three the axial interactions don't really happen when we have equatorials, they're mainly for the axials, right? And so this helps us show that a equi that bulkier groups are much more stable equatorial, not axial. Okay, so uh, it's a good idea to understand this chart, don't memorize it. Uh, they usually provide it on the test if this is important, but be prepared for the fact that they may not, right? But it's just the concept that's important here, that bulky groups like, F, like carbon chains, uh, isopropyl, terbutyl especially, uh, they, do, they favor equatorial most of the time, whereas halogens, they're, um, they favor equatorial a little bit more, just not as strongly, okay? And so I, got, I just want you guys to be prepared for that. And in the next video, we're going to be covering what's called a ring flip. Okay. And after we cover ring flips, we can talk a little bit more about other stuff. And then we can get into some example problems that I can do for you guys here just to get you um, comfortable with these chair confirmations. Okay. So if something in this video didn't make sense, please feel free to email me. Go to the CLC or Professor Office Hours. Everyone's always there to help you guys. All right, and I will see you guys in the next video.